You know those problems where they give you a graph of f prime and you have to use that to sketch what f looks like? Kind of working backwards from a graph of a derivative to find the original function and what it looks like on a graph. Do you ever find those problems difficult? Well, if so, don't worry because there's one easy trick that you can use to apply to these problems. One easy thing that you can keep in your head as you work through these problems that makes them a lot easier. And today I'm going to show you an example of how you can use this trick to work through these problems on your own so that you can do them without the headache next time. If that sounds good to you, be sure to stick around to the end of the video and hit that like button if you don't mind. Let's go ahead and jump right on into it. So here's the problems we're going to be going over today in order for me to show you how you can use a graph of f prime in order to kind of figure out what f looks like. And like I said in the intro, there's really just one main thing that you need to keep in mind when you're doing these that make them a million times easier. And that thing is that you have to remember what f prime represents about f. f prime, or the derivative of f, always tells you about the slope of f. So what that means is, if we're looking, let's say at this first example here, number one, we have this function graphed here, which is f prime, the derivative of f. Wherever we are on the y-axis, in other words, the height of f prime, tells us what the slope of f is at that point. So if we were to, for example, want to figure out the critical values of f, or in other words, the places where f prime equals zero, that's in general how you find the critical points of f or the critical numbers of f, is to look at where f prime equals zero. So what that means is we just have to look at our graph here and see where, if we have a graph of f prime, where does the output of f prime equal zero? In other words, where are we when the output of this function is zero? Well, obviously that's gonna be somewhere along this x-axis, but what we wanna figure out is the x values where that occurs. So you can see right here, f prime equals zero when x equals one, and f prime also equals zero when x equals four. So x equals one and x equals four are the two critical values of f based on this graph of f prime. We just have to look and see where f prime equals zero. So that's gonna be the first step in kind of figuring these out. And really all, all three of these parts here, a, b, and c. Because what we're trying to find in part a is the intervals where f is increasing and where f is decreasing. Part B, we're going to then figure out which values of X does F have a local maximum and a local minimum. And then we're going to proceed to sketch a possible graph of what F would look like. So figuring out your critical numbers is generally going to be the first step in this process. In order to figure out where F is increasing and decreasing, where it has local maxes and mins, you want to first figure out your critical values because those are going to be the places where, like I said, you know, the derivative is zero. Let's kind of start with a number line. That's generally kind of the easiest way to start here. We have some number line. We know that our function f is just going to exist between x equals zero and x equals five because our derivative ends at those points. So we're really just going to be looking at x equals zero to x equals five. And we know that our function f has a slope of zero at x equals one and x equals four. So if these are the only two points, x equals one and four, where our function has a slope of zero, that means everywhere else between zero to one, between one to four, and between four to five must be either increasing or decreasing, right? So how we can figure out which is which is we can, again, go back to our graph of f prime, the derivative of f, and keep in mind, the output of f prime tells us the slope of f at any given x value. So if we're looking between x equals 0 and x equals 1, just in this little section right here, we can see that our function f prime is above 0 the whole time. It's in the positive y direction, it's, uh, or the positive y area, positive y values. So what that means is f prime is positive when x is between 0 and 1. If f prime is positive, that means f is has a positive slope because f prime tells you about the slope of f. Well, if f have, has a positive slope, that means it's going up, it's increasing. So between zero and one, f is increasing. Then similarly, between x equals one and x equals four, our f prime is below the x-axis. It has a negative value. The y value of, y, of f prime right here 
is negative, which means the slope of f is negative, which means f is decreasing between x equals 1 and x equals 4. And then, again, from x equals 4 to x equals 5, f prime is above the x-axis. It has positive y values, which means the slope of f is positive, which means f is increasing between 4 and 5. So we know that the intervals where f is increasing is going to be 0 to 1 and 4 to 5. And then the interval where f is decreasing is going to be from 1 to 4. And it is important when you're writing this interval notation that you're using round parentheses here because we know that f is not increasing or decreasing at these endpoints. We know that it has a slope of 0 at those points. So now what we need to figure out, part b, where does x have local maximums and where does it have local minimums? Well, you can see just by looking at the general kind of shape that our f is going to have, if it's going up from 0 to 1 and then at 1 it starts going back down, clearly this point right here is a local maximum. So we can say that f has a local maximum at x equals 1. So x equals 1 is a maximum. And then we have a local minimum where our function goes from decreasing back up to increasing. So it's going down at x equals 4, it goes starts going back up. So clearly there's a local minimum there. So x equals 1 is a max. And x equals 4 is a min. So now what we want to do is sketch what our function f is going to look like. Well, in general, we know that it's going to have some sort of shape like this where we're going up, down, up. But this extra piece of information here, f of 0 equals 0, tells us that our function f is actually going to go through the origin. It goes through the point 0, 0. So what that means is, and if we just go ahead and graph our function f on the same set of axes as f prime here, we know that it's going to go through the point 0, 0. So we're going to start at 0, 0, and then we're going to go kind of a general shape like this, where we know at x equals 1, it's going to have a slope of 0. So this is going to be a local max here. At x equals 4, we have a local min. So there's going to be a minimum here. And then it's going to go you know, in the positive slope direction until we get to x equals 5. So it could look something like this. And we don't really have quite enough information to figure out exactly how high or low f goes because this y-axis here is not labeled to tell us exactly how steep the slope is at these points we just want to kind of get a general idea that our slope actually should be steepest negative right here so i guess this is not a a, a super accurate drawing here probably should be something more like this just to kind of smooth things out a little bit we have our local max at x equals one the steepest negative slope when we have y prime at the lowest possible point and then it kind of levels out gets to a slope of zero when y prime equals zero right here and then it's going to be a positive slope from there so again we don't really know how high or low this goes but this is a good possibility of what our function f could potentially look like based on this graph of f prime so now i'm going to leave this second example here for you to do but i would recommend starting out the same way that i did start out with your number line First, figure out where your critical numbers are. Figure out the places where y prime equals zero, or in other words, where it intersects with the x-axis. It looks like there's three of them. So you'll draw those three critical numbers on your number line. And then from there, you can figure out in which of these intervals it's increasing and decreasing and carry on from there. Just like I did for this first problem over here. You'll follow that same process. So feel free to rewind the video and rewatch those steps as you work through this one on your own. And be sure to let me know down in the comments if you're able to get the answer uh, on your own working through that second example. So hopefully you found that video helpful. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button down below. Subscribe to my channel while you're there too. It's a huge help to my channel so I can keep making more videos like this. If you want to keep this brain train rolling, learn some more about derivatives and how to deal with them, go ahead and click on one of those videos over there. Thanks and see you next time.